Okay, good afternoon all. Uh, welcome to the FX Street webinar. My name's Ian Coleman. I'm one of the traders and analysts at uh, firstwithtrading.com. Um, today's webinar, we're going to talk about Ishimoku Cloud or Ishimoku Cloud. Um, we're going to try and get some live trading forecasts on it. Um, I'm basically going to explain to you how I use the cloud. Uh, with my uh, trading uh, and analytical techniques. Okay, um, I want to say that I'm an expert in um, cloud trading, and I don't use it as the sole base of my analysis. Uh, what I do, I use it as a combination. Um, I'm a firm believer that you take in as much knowledge, knowledge as, is, as you possibly can and then probably ignore about 90% of it. Uh, you find your niche uh, or your bias in the market. Okay, There's obviously a lot of the time people look at different elements of, of analysis. And sometimes when you look back at it, you might be both selling Euro dollar or both buying Euro dollar, but for different reasons. Um, and sometimes these analytical or technical um, tools that we use both give us the same reaction. Okay. Um, now somebody might be looking at divergence on on, on, a, on an RSI, where somebody else might be looking at a wedge formation. They both tell us the same thing. They both show us that uh, you know the upward uh, pressure is is weakening and that the bias should break to the downside. Uh, but they're two different tools for showing that same uh, analysis. So I'm not going to going on too much about um, our company or about Ishimoto Cloud. I'm going to rattle through this presentation um, that, I've, that I've written just to give you a background into, into Ishimoto, just to make sure that you know uh, the rules and the nuances uh, behind uh, trading the cloud formation. Because a lot of people just take it as Support and resistance, you know, well, there's a big cloud cover, so it's not going to push through there. Uh, I'm going to be bearish on it. Um, and it's far more technical than that, okay? Um, it is mainly used by Japanese trading houses, okay, by Japanese banks. Believe it or not, the one currency pair that it normally struggles with is dollar yen. Um, and the Japanese traders, I used to be a dollar yen broker. Um, so the Japanese traders that we used to talk to um, would use it in the longer time scale. Okay, they would use the Ishimoto cloud on a weekly or a, or a daily uh, forecast analysis outlook. You can break it all the way down, and that's something that we're going to talk about today as well, moving it all the way down into short time frames. Okay, so let's get on with the slides. Enough of my chat. Hopefully this is going to work because last time, <laughs> last time we used this, it didn't work. Let's just just let me get back to the start. It keeps on flicking ahead of itself. Okay, so I work for a company called First of Trading. We are a uh, sub platform of the re of the institutional platform which is PIA first okay uh, we offer uh, analysis to our clients uh, by seven o'clock every morning okay it's either a buy sell rec trade recommendation or a bias call which is then updated later throughout the day okay that's just an example of a call this is our da dashboard as I said I'm not going to take too long on here uh, updates are, uh, are created throughout the day Okay, sell or buy recommendations with targets uh, and stop losses. Uh, the signals are easy, simplistic to use. Okay, um, there's three technical analysts that work on the platform, um, and between us, we've won, uh, or between the company, within the company, we've won uh, numerous uh, sort of analytical rewards um, in the last sort of 10 years. Okay, so Ishimoto Kinko Hoi. Uh, we're going to talk about how it's formulated, okay, cloud breakout, the Zen lines, the support resistance, 
the lagging line, which is extremely important, and inside the cloud, what the bias is when we are trading inside the cloud formation. So here we've just got a, a basic chart. I can't even remember which one it was. It's been a while since this was written. Uh, I think it's Euro dollar. Um, and then I've just basically overlaid uh, the Ishimoku cloud on here. Now, as you can see, it's not just cloud cover. We have these then lines, and we have this line here, this brown line, which is the uh, the lagging line. Okay, this is the Kumo cloud. So this basically tells us where our support and resistance lines are. We're going to talk about how this is formulated in a minute. The main feature, don't worry about the color, because when the, when, the, when the lines cross over, the cloud lines cross over, it will change color. The color is irrelevant, okay? What is important is obviously where it's located and the depth of the cloud. Obviously, the, the deeper the cloud, the more support and resistance you, you, you're going to have. Okay, Senko span A, Senko span B, that was the lines that we talked about. They form the Kumo, which is the cloud. Okay, Senko span A is the average of the Tenkan Sen and the Kujan Sen 26 periods forward. Now, the reason it's 26 periods forward is because in a Japanese calendar, the month is 26 periods. Okay, they work Saturday. Uh, Senko span B is the average of the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen 52 periods forward or two months. Okay. Then we've got the Tenken Sen, which is the turning or trigger line. Now that's closest to price action. So if we just zoom in here. You can see that they, they work like moving averages, okay, but the difference between the Sen lines and the moving averages are is they don't take the average price of the last, last nine bars or the last, last 15 bars. They take the high and the low and they give you the middle price, okay? So that's just explained a bit here. So it plots the midpoint, the Tenkan Sen plots the midpoint of the high and the low of the last nine sessions, okay? So if the high point was 159, low point was 158 over the last nine, uh, over the last nine sessions, then obviously the Tenkan Sen would be at 158.50, the bang in the middle. Uh, Kijun Sen, which is the standard line, this is like a longer moving average, okay, so it doesn't, it's not, tucked into price action uh, as much. And this plots the midpoint of the high and low, the last 26 sessions, okay? So basically the last 26 days, which would be a month. Again, we're getting back to that 26 period or the last 26 hours, etc. Okay, the Chiku span, which is the lagging line. Also, just, I'll stop there. While, while I'm doing the, hosting the, the webinar today, if you do have any questions, queries, or you need me to slow down, explain something again, please, please do stop me. Um, I work in an office on my own all day. Um, I crave interaction. <laughs> so if you do have any, have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Okay, the Chiku span, which is a lagging line. Now this is quite an important, uh, line as far as or indicator as far as the uh, Ishimoku cloud is concerned. This actually drags behind price action. I've got offices in London on London Wall, but I, I start at half past three in the morning, so I work from home. I used to live in London, but I was a broker, and now I live in, uh, in Sheffield, which is where I grew up. Um, Chiku Span, so Chiku Span plots price action, the price line, okay, the close of the last candle, 26 bars behind price action. So if we go back here. Okay, so this is basically showing you, if you note, note this low point here, this is the low point here. So as that was making that low point, the Chiku span would have been here. Okay, and as she moves up, as price action moves up, the Chiku span moves up. So it just follows that price action. This, the price action is happening now. Okay, it's not a history lesson, it's, it's as it's happening. Okay, so we're now going to talk, we've talked about how it's formulated, okay, the Zen line. Uh, we're now going to talk about cloud breakout. 
as I said previously, I wouldn't purely suggest you just trade um, Ishimoto Cloud because what will happen is it, it lags too far behind the market. Okay, so say if you took your buy signal here as it broke, and then your sell signal there, you'd have only got that much out of all this price action. Okay. What I would advise people to do is to combine it into their other analysis. Okay. So just be aware of where the support and resistance lines are. Be aware uh, if you've had a false breakout or a true breakout. And then obviously where your resistance or support that sort of support and resistance levels are from that point. Uh, and the retest. We talk a lot about retest, or I talk a lot about retest in um in price action. Uh, we had it this morning in Aussie dollar. We called, or I called a Aussie dollar sell trade this morning in our live uh, on, on first of trading. And this was to do with a, a wedge formation, a four hour wedge formation that had been um, forming in, in Aussie dollar since last Thursday. Uh, it's not the only reason, it's also in a C leg down, but that's getting into something different because that's getting into Elliott Wave. Different chart formations, but that move up this morning. So we had the, we had the breakout of the, of the wedge formation, and then this morning we had a, a, a push back up on that news about uh, about the Greece bailout. Okay, and it basically hit the trend line perfectly, and then and then broke lower. Um, I'll get onto the analysis in a bit, and I'm chuntering slightly. So we've got a breakout here. Okay, so we've got a good breakout here. Now this is what's important, not just the breakout. Okay, we've got the Z lines are in order, which they have to be. We get a good breakout, but it's where the span line is. Okay, the Chiku span has to be below price action, obviously on a bearish break. So it has to be below price action, 26 periods from this breakout. So you count 26 hours back, this was an hourly chart, and the, this is below the breakout line. So it is a good breakout. What happens? What happens is we come back to test the breakout level. Okay, you come back, it comes back, tests, and then we get price action. Okay, I'm a great believer in price action. And by price action, I mean chart formation. I want to see bullish, bearish. Uh, continuation or reversal patterns and this is an engulfing red candle this candle this hourly candle not only does it come back to retest the breakout level but it fully engulfs the previous hours worth of price action and from that point on we come back small retest again and obviously the market moves quite dramatically lower okay just notice this turning line, just notice how it, it gets used as resistance on the way down on this move down. Um, what also should be noted is just as this price action moves across, that when the Chi2 span hits the cloud, it just gives that knee jerk reaction back up towards the, uh, the cloud resistance. Um, somebody's, not me, but somebody else has done a um, uh, an analytical report or, or back tested um, Ishimoto cloud breakouts with the Chiku span confirming and with the Chiku span not confirming, i.e., above being above price action. And they proved that you get a lot more positive breakouts, okay, if uh, if the Chiku span is, is, is in the correct order. Um, and also note when she breaks out, I know it sounds like a lot to take in, just the thickness of the cloud base. Okay, you can see as, as we're coming down into this breakout that this span line hasn't got a lot to break through. If this was a thick cloud cover or cloud base here, even though we've broken out here, there's a good chance you're just going to bounce off it for a little while uh, before you head back through. So then we're basically just here, we've got the breakout. Sorry, let's just pull it in. Ten lines are in order, like we said. We get the breakout, we've then got a downward bias. Okay. 
and that's what we talked about the bearish engulfing candle as I said I've got ahead of myself a little bit now inside the cloud also an important factor uh, with regards to uh, the Kumo if price action enters the Kumo cloud from below then the bias is still to break to the up to, to the downside okay if it, if it enters the Kumo from above the bias is still to break to the upside it is not until you actually break up out through the Kumo that, uh, that the bias changes. Okay, and you can see here with price action moves in, we get spikes or pins the tops there. It moves back out, and then here we get an engulfing candle. It actually takes out the whole range of the Kumo cloud, moves lower, and then we get the breakout. Okay, very choppy price action. And what will normally happen as well, when you're inside the cloud, um, price action will be erratic, okay, because it will normally be consolidating. One other thing we're just going to say before uh, we get onto the live chart is the send lines, okay. We said that they're like moving averages uh, in the way that they track price action, but you'll also notice that a lot of the time you get what, what we call um, flat, okay? And that basically tells us that the price range is is consolidating because the high and the low of the last like nine candles has not changed, okay? So when you see um, flat formations, just be wary because basically what that means is you're either forming some sort of triangle for formation in the ascending triangle, descending triangle, you're in a channel, okay, it's basically telling you there's consolidation. So if you see these flats, especially when they're both flat, okay, you want to be wary of breakouts. Um, so that's one of the sort of hidden gems uh, that the Kumo Cloud has. The entry point after the breakout, Thomas, is you can either just blindly uh, pull the trigger on the breakout, put your uh, your stop loss uh, above your trigger candle, or as I'd normally suggest, I'd enter. I, I, I'm not a great believer in buying or selling in one unit. Um, I think a lot of traders, especially uh, novice traders, um, don't give themselves room to manoeuvre or, or to manage a trade. Um, so I would, I would sell small and then I would sell a little bit more on a pullback at a worse level, okay, um, to improve my to improve my average. The thickness and the thinness of the cloud basically dictates uh, the amount of support or resistance that's being projected forward. There's been a lot of price action around a certain level. You'll get uh, you'll get a thicker cloud. The trigger. The initial trigger of a Kumo breakout is the breakout. As long as everything's in order, as long as the the uh, lagging line is below price action, and as long as your Zen lines are in order, then you, you, you buy the close of the candle as it breaks out. Okay. Any other questions at the moment? No? Okay, lagging line, and we've talked about the lagging line already. Okay, and this is a false breakout, okay? So the lagging line is inside the Kumo. So it's telling us that there is support to the downside. Remember, that the inside and the outside of the cloud also acts as support and resistance. Okay, so it's the same as highs or lows. If we've got, in price action, if we've got a, a, re a relevant high, that the market has hit and hit and hit again, and then it breaks out. That resistance level then becomes a support level, okay? It's the, and vice versa. An area of support, once broken, becomes an area of resistance. Now, it's the same with the Kumo cloud, okay? The, the outside of the cloud is support or resistance, but then inside, once you get inside the cloud, those tops and bottoms are then support and resistance. 
You can do. It's, it's, again, it's a, it, just answering this question. You, you place your stop loss at the high of the breakout candles. You also use the top of the Kumo. Yes, but it's all about money management. Um, as I said before, I'm not just blindly buying and selling breakouts. Um, the majority of the time, to be perfectly honest, I will already already be in a trade by the time it breaks out because I would have looked at uh, a, a price action normally uh, to to get me into that uh, that trade. Um, you can use the top of the Kumo. But if it's too far away, then you need to look for another relevant level. Um, it's not black and white, as with most uh, technical analysis. You don't just pull the trigger uh, and wait for your profit targets to come in. Um, sometimes you're that lucky, but most of the time you won't be. Uh, as I said at the start, it's a combination of everything. Okay, I'm going to show you my live charts, and then I'm going to basically explain to you um, how I try and decipher what's going on. And analysis, technical analysis cannot be learned in a, in a day or a week or by reading one book. Um, I've been at this business for years. I'm 42. I started when I was 18. Um, and I still sometimes look at forums and chat rooms and I'll see something and think that's interesting. You know, and I'll look into it a little bit further. Um, you have to build up a mass amount of knowledge to be able to really trade and forecast profitably, I, I believe, in, in, in FX. Unless you are lucky enough, one of the lucky few, to stumble on a system that gives you more, more winners than losers on a regular basis. Uh, so here we've got support. I don't recommend any books on Ishimoku. Uh, there's a website out there uh, that if you put in Ishimoku Cloud, you, I think you'd be able to find it. There's only one book that's written um, by Nicole Elliott, uh, which is pretty poor. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend a book on it, to be fair. I'll keep your money. Okay, so let's drop this down. Now, can you let me know, guys, whether or not you can see these charts properly? What happened last time? Um, we had issues with the camera. These are CQG charts, and it doesn't seem to. Um, yeah, I don't speak or read Japanese, though, unfortunately. This is actually gold here. So we get off gold. Okay, we'll get the crosshairs on as well. Um, okay, so just put the crosshairs on as well so you should be able to see it um, a little bit better. Now, I take a, the way that I trade, the way that I forecast, I take a bias off longer time, time frames, higher time frames, weekly daily chart, and I draw them all the way down into shorter time frames to try and give myself uh, a bias. Um, the weekly charts, I look at purely support and resistance levels for the, for the Kumo. Um, I'm not, if I was to trade that, I'd need very deep pockets because I need to have very uh, large stop losses. What I am looking at, I'm looking at support levels. So I'm looking at the base of the clouds for support. Okay, I'm looking for breakout, which we had here. Let's give us a zoom in a bit. Okay, this is a big history lesson. This is going back to sort of January 11. So we had the breakout. We then had a pullback. And this is what I like to see. Okay, so we get the breakout, the pullback. My moving averages are in order. I've got an RSI with a 16 setting on here. Sorry, a 15 setting on here. I don't use RSI 14, I use 15. Um, and we get this pullback to support. So like a, uh, a wedge or a triangle breakout that we should mentioned earlier, the market will come back and hit or test the support line. So once we've got that breakout, 
this is bullish price action. Okay, so talking, we've got an engulfing candle formation. Can you still see the chart? Okay. So we've got it drives me mad to see. The software doesn't seem to like uh, these charts. Um, so we've got this bullish engulfing weekly candle. Okay, breaks out of the top of the Kumo, comes back to retest. Now in shorter time frames, you want to be looking at this area over a daily, hourly, four hourly, four reversal candles. So again, I'm just going to like the chart that skewed. Um, I think the circle has gone again. Um, so pullback. This is this is what you're looking for. Okay, the send lines are in order. Uh, if you pull it back 26 periods, it's here, okay? So it's above price action. The weekly bias there is to the upside, okay? And you also get a very decent run here. Now, this is what we want to be noting on the way back down. So on the way back down, we hit cloud cover, okay? And we get a bounce. Again, don't trade mindlessly off of off, off the weekly uh, cloud, what you want to do, you want to be flicking through time frames. You either want to, you either want to have a chart package that will enable you to have separate windows. So you'd have a weekly window, uh, a daily window, four hourly, hourly, 15 minutes, five minutes, whatever your trigger frame is. And then you want to be looking at different areas of support and resistance on different time frames. So here, it breaks in, moves down, touches the base of the cloud. There is no other reason apart from the fact that that's an Ishimoku cloud. There's no fib lines there, okay? There's no previous highs, previous lows. That is purely cloud uh, support. Okay, moves up, again, rejects. We get a decent move down. Now the bias obviously at the moment, as, as far as cloud cover is concerned, is still to the downside. However, this morning star formation, the weekly morning star formation, at the base of the euro dollar bear run, Okay, I'm now bullish or medium term bullish uh, for Euro dollar. And then break it down into time frames again. Okay, so here, this was our morning star formation. Can you still see that chart? By the way, I don't want to uh, keep rattling on if nobody can see it. I'll just change the time frame. Yeah. Okay, so this was our morning star formation. And this gave us, the, gave us the upward bias, okay? Uh, into short time frames, which is sort of five minutes, 15 minutes, I'll say when it's sort of trending in between uh, the moving averages, that I don't have a bias. But in larger time frames, weeklies and dailies, I also need to have a bias because I want to trade off, off, off off shorter candles, okay, off your hours, off your, off your five minutes. So here, we moved up, we hit our first resistance here at the cloud, okay, moved down, and all we hit was support. Now, initially, I thought this was, okay, nice little head and shoulders formation. So that morning star from the head, We've got left shoulder, right shoulder. So we're looking for buy signals, and we got some back into the cloud. Okay, and you can note today two things that have happened. Okay, it's retested this trend line, but more importantly, it's retested the outside of this quite thick Kumo. Remember what we said, while we're inside, there is no, there is a bias, the bias, but it's more of a non-trending area, okay? It's basically saying to us that this area, this choppy, 
black line is 50%. So a decent move up, a decent correction down towards 50%. The only worrying factor about this is, is the fact that that move down was in one wave. Okay, most corrective sequences will be in three waves. So there's nothing to say at this point that we could not have a stronger move down towards 61.8, which is down here. Okay, and 61.8. To make it a bit thicker so you can see it. Okay, this is 61.8. It lines up perfectly with the base of the cloud formation. Okay, I'm not saying you should just click off this webinar today, go and sell Euro dollar. The bias is, is the short term bias or medium term bias still looks quite bullish at the moment. Uh, we called a sell trade this morning um, on the basis of this analysis, but it's still unclear whether or not this is just a short term correction or if we're going to get a long term uh, move to the downside in a third wave. So this would be AB, this would be BC, this would be CD. Okay. Some mixed signals, but just to show you the short term bias, one to 40 minutes. Okay. Previous high, previous high, so was resistance, still resistance, it hasn't broken through. This was that trend line that we had from the potential head and shoulders formation. Okay. A decent bullish candle up um, from that news overnight. But then an insider army, okay? And that insider army candle off this trend line, if you use the, the four hour, purely four hour charts, that actually isn't a trigger to sell until it breaks this low here. Um, and one of the other reasons that we called a, uh, a selling euro dollar this morning, um, was basically looking at all the other dollar pairs. Okay, look at a lot. A lot of the time, we look at correlation. I could see sterling dollar or cable uh, coming lower in the C wave, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, I could see Aussie dollar, as I said, hitting the wedge formation, then coming lower. Is, is this a four, wave four correction? Then up leg as wide wave five. No, I don't. I, my personal belief is belief is is, is not. Um, what I have a tendency to do when I get down into short time frames, okay, in my personal trading account, not my forecast. The, the forecast that that that, um, that we do for first year trading is 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 more of a, a long term forecast. Um, the short term forecast or my short term views. I look for bounces, okay, and I look for these areas of support and resistance. So when I can see areas of support and resistance, i.e., overnight, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't around at two o'clock in the morning, um, I'm looking for bounces around the cloud, around my moving averages. Um, so here, you know, we can see that we've pushed, pushed down, and the cloud has been used as support twice on this hourly chart. Now, if we then go down to five minutes, okay, I then look for uh, reversal candles. First of all, I'm going to look at my fibs. So this was this was a high here, okay. So this is a wave high. Is this a three wave correction? Is it a five wave move down? Am I just buying into a corrective period? And I need to use a little bit more. So I get a fib extension on. Okay, so I take I take my my first wave. So this is wave one. Okay, this is the rejection up. I then look to see cloud cover in these short time frames. And this, once we once we we've confirmed a lower high and we break down below the cloud in these five minute sequences, I then want to be looking at fib levels. So it breaks down below the cloud. Inside a army, which is just a show of indecision, okay, 
as it comes back to retest. It then breaks the low of the candle. That is really your trigger level there. Okay, the break of that five minute candle. It then moves down to 161.8%, which is wave three. Um, we get three wave correction. And then we move down to 261.8. So these fib levels have worked perfectly. Okay. Engulfing bar and then a move back up. What a five wave sequence is an impulse sequence. And it will normally dictate that you'll at least get another five wave sequence down. So if it's from the top of the trend, which this one is on the hourly, five, three, five will normally be at least what you'll get um, in a three wave correction. So for today, I kind of thought we'd get a short term move back up towards this area of resistance, okay, between sort of 132, not far off where we are at the moment actually, 132.40, 132.30. Again, looking for price action. Look for the wave up to be in free, a free wave corrective uh, um, manner. And then look for a move back down to the downside. Um, so there's a few ways that the, the cloud has helped us out in Euro dollar. When we go down to breaking the cloud up with the rest of the analysis that we've done. Okay, if we look again to the weekly, not the weekly, the daily. Okay, we've got cloud resistance. Okay, we have to be aware of. It also goes some very nice cloud support. So we've had support, we've had resistance, okay, we've had resistance here. So there's three areas that we could have traded off using short term, short term candle formations. Okay, um, 240 minutes or four hours, as we say, doesn't really give us a great deal. Okay. Decent breakout here, retest, move down. Again, a bit of a retest here, but nothing to sort of uh, get excited about. 60 minutes. We had a breakout, a move back down, hugging uh, the cloud, and then a push back up. This is the bias, okay? Somebody was just asking about how I use the, the, uh, the RSI purely as a trend indicator. I don't care about it being oversold or overbought. I just want to bias the whole, my personal trading is all about trying to not pick the tops and bottoms of, of, um, of, of wave patterns. I, I prefer to, to follow a, a trend. Um, and basically what this tells me, when this RSI is above 50, I want to be still looking for, for long-term bullish price action. Okay, so it's above the cloud. RSI is above 50. It's showing everything bullish on moving averages. Okay, you want to be looking for short, in short time frames for, for moves higher, basically. Um, this move lower, you can see, is in a corrective sequence. The angle is very slight. Okay, so in shorter time frames, 5, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you look for your reversal candles, your bullish. Um, engulfing candles, your inside of armies at, at areas of support and resistance. Um, we can see we're just getting quite a nice reaction here. Um, I would say that this move up will not break uh, 132.46. Notice, ne never trade a signal, sorry, never trade a candle until it's closed, okay? So many times you'll look at a candle formation, you'll think that's uh, it's an inside alarming. I'm going to trade it. It's at, it's at a level that I fancy, uh, so I'm going to pull the trigger. Um, a lot of the time, if you put it too early, it will not be an inside candle anymore. It will go up, push through your 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 area of resistance or support. An inside Arami candle is just a show of indecision. So here we've got this inside Arami candle. And if you guys can think the things go off here for a bit. So here is an inside army candle, but it's after a bullish engulfing. Okay, and look at the size of the bullish engulfing candle compared to the inside army. The inside army candle is not triggered until the high or the low of the previous candle is taken. Okay, so again here we've got an inside army candle. 
It's just reacting. It's just reacting with a horizontal. Okay. Around an area of support and resistance. This was support. Okay. It's now resistance. So it's just reacting. In fact, it's a little bit higher than that. And this is the sort of area that I'd look at streaming in the middle, like I said, between 30 and 40. So I'm a short term bear on Euro dollar. Um, but I'm a medium term bull. Um, I think that Euro dollar is based out um, for um, quite some time. I'm waiting or a play the, the short trade if it shows itself, but I'm waiting for a breakout of this, uh, this payout. Um, if okay, if she does break out the lagging line is going to be above price action. Okay, the send lines are in order. You can see this is the turning line. Okay, so they're in order. So that will be in order. Where would the target level or the first target level be? The first target level will be when this lagging line reaches um, the cloud. It should be about here, I would have thought by the time it gets up. Now what is that level? What is 34, 34? If you look back, it was an area of support. It was then an area of resistance. So what is it now? It's an area of resistance on the breakout. Today, signals are mixed. Okay, mixed to bearish, short term bearish, but with a pullback already already taken, but only in one wave. There is a chance for a, a, a larger correction lower, uh, and if that does come lower, I'd look to 61.8 percent. At that point, I'd look for a breakout. Uh, the head and shoulders formation has been invalidated really because we broke through uh, the base of this uh, of this right shoulder. Uh, it's not a Nielsen candle scanner. No, it's just a, uh, on CQG you've got this thing called pet candle formation on the left hand side. <coughs> and it's a lazy man's um, way of, of seeing uh, short term candle formations basically. Or, or just candle formation. I only have it set for sort of insider army candles um, and bullish and bearish engulfing because that's really the only two candle formations I really like to see. Um, what other currency pairs or or um, products can we cover in the next 15 minutes? If you look at cable, I'll just talk you through this Aussie dollar quickly because I think this one's more interesting than anything else. Um, that's my analysis from this morning. Let's just get rid of those fibs. Okay. Um, again, this is the weekly chart. Uh, moves in, serves a bias to break to the upside. Moves in, serves a bias to break to the upside. Bit of price action in here, not really very good. There's an inside of Rami candle there. Breaks above the moving average, it's come back to retest. Again, note on the breakout. Um, that she comes back to retest, so she breaks out, come back, to, comes back to retest, and then and then moves up on the weekly. Uh, the CQG charts um, daily. So here we got um, a fantastic uh, breakout. Okay, there wasn't much of a, a retest, it was just a straight breakout. This is actually just a test of this, this previous height. And then this rally up. Um, what I would say, my short term analysis for this pair is now at least a, an ABC correction lower. Um, 
I've got all sorts of things happening in Aussie dollar at the moment. So we've got 161.8% off this first weight. There's a potential even for this to be um, a bearish butterfly formation, uh, which is extremely bearish, comes down to this sort of level. Um, sorry. I hope that's better. Put the cursor back on again. So we've got this 161.8%. This has got the potential to be butterfly formation. Okay, price action has not been great off the top. But at the moment, all I'm looking for is a free wave correction. Okay, down to about around about 106 the figure. Uh, I'll then watch price action around that level. Um, I don't normally take a lot of notice of fundamentals, but uh, there was some news out overnight. They're worried about the, the um, RBA worried about the strength of the uh, um, Aussie dollar at the moment. They're also worried about un unemployment. Um, I think there's a chance of a bit of devaluing uh, in this uh, in this pair. Going back to shorter time frames. Okay, 240 minutes, just chopping around inside. This uh, is what I believe to be the first. When, when you're looking at corrective and impulse waves, okay, these ABC patterns or ABCD patterns that uh, that form in these corrective free waves, okay, the inside waves can be in five waves or three waves. It gets quite complicated, um, and they can overlap. Okay, so here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got this horrible wedge formation. This was a pullback to retest this morning, okay, and then the move back lower. So, one, two, three, four, five. I don't think she's got that much more to go, okay. Um, I actually got out here. Um, I had my target, profit target of 106.35 first thing, but I'm not sure about this price action in this shorter, this shorter, uh, this short wave here. So again, I'm just using my fibs. I'm using this as support, support, support. And then when I get the break, I'm looking for the retest again. Okay. And I'm looking for price action that shows me that my buyer should still be to the downside. So here, just putting on my fib extension. Again, I'm not fanatical about ways overlapping. I've got one, two, three, down towards 161.8%. Big spike. This is the news again about uh, Greece overnight. Then the move back up, and then this push lower. And this is really when I start to look at it in shorter time frames. I know I've had a breakout. Okay. Um, and also, something to note here, sorry, just to keep on going on about different things, but just just watch this Chiku span. Okay, this is the Chiku span. This is the breakout. This is the first level, 161.8%. What does it do, this Chiku span? It hits this trend line. Okay, now this move then back up. Where does it stop? It stops at the top of the cloud cover. So it's not only the price action here that you want to be looking at, it's the price action back here. Okay? And as that Chiku span hits this resistance, this price action hits resistance here. Okay? And it pushes lower. Also, it's a little bit more confirmation. Bang on the 50 button. Okay? The RSI. So the bias here breaks out to the downside. This RSI moves back up to 50. You've got Chiku span resistance there, and then we basically take it down to short time frames. I use five minutes as a trigger. Okay. Inside a Rami candle shows investor indecision. Okay. This bearish candle, this candle here, the third candle, breaks the low. Of the, uh, of the candle that forms the inside of Rami and the bias is into the downside. 
Okay, moves back down, breaks lower, uses the top in this short time frame, again breaks lower. Engulfing candle here, even though it's not highlighted, it is, the range is completely taken out, and then we get this impulse move down. Um, the reason why I've got out is because the hourly chart is dictating to me that this is a fifth wave lower. Um, the five minute chart, plus, I mean, I've taken decent profit and I don't want to outstay, outstay my welcome. Uh, and the five minute chart, okay, third wave, the wave one, impulsive three down to here, little fourth wave move back up, fifth wave, just looks poor. Um, they don't have to extend 261.8%. Um, the fifth wave is the hardest wave to try, uh, to trade. That actually there is not a bad, um, shorting pattern. Hit the cloud on five minutes, an inside candle, just breaking, uh, the base. Again, sort of, you'd have to sort of scroll back to see previous price action. To look for target areas around about here. Um, if this is a C wave, it has to take this low, 106.46. So this bias is still to the downside. And this could well just be a little fourth wave correction before the next leg. Yes, but um, I'm also quite tight, really, apart from when I'm at the pub. Um, I, I don't like, but if I take signals off larger time frames, I do sometimes, but then I'll take them in, in smaller amounts. I find that if I, if I use a five minute chart, and invariably, by the way, I will ignore all of this on a five minute chart. I'll ignore my moving averages. I'll ignore the RSI. I'll ignore, sorry, this is a, an hourly. Uh, I'll ignore all of this, all the cloud. I'll look to SIB levels and that's about it. SIB levels and price action. Um, because I'm taking my bias off the daily. I'm taking my bias and my trigger off the hourly. And the only reason that I ever look down to a five minute chart is this, to try and get a decent formation. If I waited for the moving averages to cross over to get below the 50, break the cloud and retest, you know, you've potentially missed 40, 40 odd minutes worth of price action there. Uh, quickly look at K, but I don't know if there's anybody on after us. A cable this morning. It's got a very funny looking head and shoulders. Um, get the cursor back on. Right shoulder, right shoulder. I think this is just a small correction before the next move up, okay? Not great as far as the cloud's concerned, okay? We broke out, come right back inside, but the bias now is to the upside. Obviously, she's broken back up. If we just take it down to shorter time frames, let's get rid of that fib. What did we have inside there? Which is a real giveaway. An inside of army candle. Okay. It moved, it used that high against that high. It then came back. It then touched this neckline inside of army candle. And then she broke to the upside. Um, I think this is just a very short term pullback before the next rally up. Um, just to show you on 15 minutes, sorry, on uh, one hour. Uh, to the extension. 
So we'll talk about impulse and corrective waves. Okay, here, that's, that's strong, that's weak. Okay, so that's impulsive, that's corrective. Breaks the cloud, never looks back. Um, very small correction, if you like, at 161.8%. Um, again, die-hard Elliott Wave theorists would look for a bigger pullback at that level. But in a strong trend, it's normally just a bit of profit taking. Uh, and sometimes it will just blast all the way through 161.8%. And you'll miss you'll miss an entry. What we did have, we had a move up towards 261.8 percent. Okay, and then this move lower. I think at the moment that this is just a corrective sequence. Um, looking at larger time frames, okay, this is wave one or A wave. This is B wave, and I think C wave takes us right up and beyond. Um, and I think that this move here is just corrective. Um, it's actually hit 38.2 at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, it could potentially get down towards this sort of level, spike through the base and then and then move back up. Um, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shorting cable here, put it that way. I'd have more of a, a bullish bias than a bearish bias on this pair now. Just looking at five minutes. Again it's a bit messy. Inside an army candle there. The gradual moves lower, but I'd need to see more price action to really get a grip of whether or not this move lower is finished. Because there's nothing here, there's no inside candles. This is just normal price action. There's a previous low coming back here. Uh, Inside the cloud, so we have got a bias to break to the upside. The daily's got uh, an upward bias. Uh, the long-term outlook is bullish. Um, like I say, but the price action is not shorter time frame. It's not exactly Im impulsive at the moment. Okay, uh, any questions before we uh, wrap it up? Uh, one thing I will say briefly, at the moment we've got um, a, a largely discounted subscription, one month subscription to the site. Um, it's www.firstfortrading.com. Uh, we can get a month's worth of analysis for just £25. Um, um, this software is called CQG. Uh, I wouldn't advise anybody to use it just because of the cost basically. Uh, for the FX package it's about £500 a month. Uh, the only reason I use it is because I don't pay for it. Work pays for it. <laughs> or my company pays for it. It's very very good for, for what we do which is send out an analytical reports like this. Thanks for that, Ward. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's not too confusing. Uh, and uh, good luck. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.